All right, so if you missed today's stage, I don't know what you were doing in your life. It was one of the best stages I've ever seen in cycling in recent history. Anyway, uh, Jonas Vingard basically destroyed the race. He put two minutes, or almost three minutes into Tadej Pogacar, a minute into Quintana. It was unbelievable race. So we'll, we'll look at the profile first on people Strava, and then we'll go into the final climb and analyze, did Tadej Pogacar explode? Or was it more that everyone else rode really well? So first, we're going to look at Sapkus's data because there weren't many in the GC favorites group who had numbers. So anyway, the first climb you can see only ridden at 4.9 watts per kilo over 12 minutes. Not very hard. I thought it could have exploded because you see here there's so many hairpins. I thought, you know, they could try and be a bit more of an explosion. You know, as soon as you get towards the back, you get a yo-yo effect, etc. And then it's very hard to come back. Anyway, the first climb, cold to telegraph from the parking. Uh, this was not done too hot to begin with, so you can see it was only ridden at five watts per kilo. But after that, it got a bit more, get, got a bit more nuclear, six watts per kilo, um, for the last ten minutes of the climb. And this is when Tade Bagatcha was attacking, Roglic was attacking. Roglic went over the top and then waited, and then Laporte was waiting for him. See, they got the KOM down, uh, the Telegraph to Valwa. Now the real thing that sort of exploded was the early slopes of the Glibier here. Like these was super, super hard. And you can, what we're going to see here is if we actually look at like Sepkus's best 20 minutes, um, you'll again see that, sorry, that was actually at the top of the telegraph, but that was because he got spat. But actually this bit here was really, really, really hard. We're going to go over to Roman Bardet's data. So Sepkus did a 48.34, which is the KOM, 5.3 watts per kilo. Doesn't sound that crazy, but was up to altitude. Um, but you can also see up here, the top part was ridden at 5.4 and he was losing time. So you'd say Tadej Pogacar was do and uh, Vingegaard were probably doing like 5.6, 5.7 maybe, because he did lose a fair amount of time um, before he basically gained most of it back on the descent. Um, we can then have a look at bar days and this will also allow you to sort of figure out how many watts per kilo they were doing, because I think the, the preview to the climb was more important than anything else. So we look at um, bar days time was 47.43 and, and his was 48.25. So we put a minute into him. So yeah, you can probably say on that climb, it probably only was like 5.4-ish. But if we look at the last, um, so the last 8K, which is more realistic of what was going on, you can see here the last 8K was 25 minutes. Um, and with Bardet, it was like a minute quicker. So 19K an hour, 8%, 1565 VAM. You'd probably say that's like five and a half. Sepkus, I don't know if his weight is accurate. His watts per kilo do so even a little bit low. Um, but yeah, it was probably like five, five and a half maybe watts per kilo on this climb on the last 24 uh, meters so 24 minutes which again doesn't sound crazy but if you look at the altitude like this starts at 2100 meters like 2000 meters sorry and goes up to 2600 which is pretty crazy so i think that's that's to set the scene before the final climb is already done like sepkus did like half an hour at six watts per kilo sorry to 10 minutes at six watts per kilo but all in all it's quite a hard climb like obviously drafting but still probably like 5.7 or something um i think that was what 5.4 for Sepkus, but the bottom part was really quite easy. But this, and then there was the nuclear part at the bottom of the Galibier, which isn't really shown because Sepkus wasn't involved, but it was pretty hard for like Roglic, Vingard, etc. And then they rode like 5.3 to 5.5 probably for Bardet and the favourites, maybe 5.6 even for Poggy because he was on the front the whole time, up to altitude, which is crazy. Then the valley, um, yeah, you can see not, not much. 200 normalised, so for these boys, real, real chill. And that basically continued the whole way. Um, Kush was in the further group back. I think he was in the Gaudu group. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but then he managed to get across. But you can see here, very, very chill. Um, and then we got the and then we got the last climb. So you can see here, he he didn't really do much, Sep Kush. He just rode at like 260 watts. You can see the beginning part. He tried to do a bit more turns. But realistically, he was pretty much spat from the very bottom. Um, there wasn't really much he could do. Um, you can see here like 354 minutes for the first like 4k or something but yeah from the right hand corner he tried to do as much as he could but you can see not much can be done um, when you've got really big names so that is when it's better to go over to Roman Bardet's data now he has the KOM up here and he did 1600 VAM and he got put a minute 10 that is quick like the segment isn't the same as what I'm going to show you in a minute but you think 1600 VAM and he's got put a minute into. That is bonkers. So we go over to Amrita Poli, who does the watts per kilo calculations. He's he's very good at them. Um, doesn't overestimate them too much. And you can see here his predictions. Vingegaard, 35 point minutes, 56. So it's a slightly different segment, um, but that's sort of irrelevant. But you can see 18.83k an hour. 
versus bar days of 17.7. So almost a kilometre and a half, a kilometre an hour quicker, 1700 VAM. But the thing to really think about, actually, I think is more like, um, we're going to go look at this peak VAM. Now, this is this is some pretty, pretty good Strava stuff. But you can see the peak VAM here of 10 of 1700 is actually like before the start. So you can see this is when actually body is chasing. And that obviously VAM isn't necessarily 100% representative of what's Paquito. But I think it goes to show that maybe the bottom part here was actually when Michael was on the wheel was not too hard. So this was 1600 VAM. And this was Poggy probably being like, mate, I'm not on a great day. Michael, can you just like set everyone at 1600 VAM? We're just going to sit there. And you can obviously see that like there was then some big attacks and like it then when he's riding on his own for the last like 20 minutes, like five, last 5k, you can see it's like 1630. Um, and obviously you'd expect there to be higher VAM in a group because the guy on the front is obviously doing more was Kilo. So that would indicate that actually he's doing more was Kilo then obviously faded a little bit towards the end. But I think the question then is to ask, did Pagacha have a bad day or did everyone else have a, a decent day? And I think, and Vingard have a nuclear day. Now, I think we can obviously say Vingard a nuclear day. I think it, it's it's hard to argue that he didn't because he was doing, you know, stupid numbers up the Galibier altitude and then whacked out, you know, we'll probably say six, 6.1 maybe watts per kilo for close to 40 minutes, 35 minutes up to altitude. Like that's a nuclear performance. Like, it doesn't, doesn't matter what you're saying. It just is. But the question is, would Peak Poggy be able to match it? Now, Peak Poggy on Prata de Tivo, which is a similar climb, um, last year, he did like 6.3 for half an hour. Like, big. But I think Peak Poggy would struggle to match this. I, I honestly think it, it's a performance where I think it's... If the Galibia wasn't as hard, it would be like, okay, it's a good performance, it's not crazy. But considering how hard the Galibia was, how hard like they were climbing the, the end of it, I think it's... um. It's a performance where I think he'd always gain 30, 40 seconds on Poggy. I, I don't think Poggy can do the crazy what's Piquito then. Um, I think it's just a ridiculous performance. And I'm not sure there's many people who can compete. Maybe Niderman on the best day of his life. Maybe Bernal again because it's up to altitude. I would like to see Bernal on the stage like this. Yeah, I think he could have caused carnage. But obviously, we'll have to wait another year for that. But yeah, I think the conclusion is that it's... um. Yeah, it's a ridiculous day from Vingegaard. And that, like, I can't really spell it in how unbelievable it is because... Even just doing that to altitude, like, is crazy. Um, the last 400 meters you think is over 2,000 meters. Um, sorry, the last 400 meters climbing is over 2,000 meters. But the fact that he went out to altitude twice, well over 2,000 meters, and been never on, bonkers performance. Absolutely ridiculous. And, um, yeah, we'll see what you can do tomorrow. Can he back it up or can he not? GC-wise, looking pretty sweet for the boy. Two minutes of a bar day. Um, and then everyone else is, is pretty close up to, up to Adam Yates, really. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about the performance today. It's pretty exciting. It's good to see Pog can get beaten. Uh, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.